I'm in studio with the uh, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. Johnny, good morning. Delegate Michael Heights. Good morning, Robert. A couple of points of clarification this morning in our Facebook page, as uh, so often uh, can happen in the discussion segment. Uh, it can uh, devolve into some uh, discussions that uh, are kind of going in a, a direction that might be based on a false statement. So let me clarify something I said earlier in regards to if your candidate wasn't there, it wasn't because we didn't try to get them there. We only invited at the state level the governors. We invited the four serious candidates on the Republican side for governor. At the other state offices, we did not invite those for debate. Uh, we were capped by some time constraints for the room that we had in the days available. So we decided it would be governors, which is the first time we've branched out beyond the local officials. And uh, Mike wanted to make sure we invited the governors. Mike is in Mike Hornby. So we invited the governor candidates. We did not invite treasurer, auditor, uh, ag secretary. Secretary of State. Secretary of State. We did not get into those because of time constraints and such. But if we were going to go bigger than just local, we wanted to make sure it was with the governors because that's obviously the headline position in the state. Sure. Otherwise, as usual, state senate, house of delegates, filtered on down, and that's the way we did it. Uh, we did the order based on what time people could get out of work to get there because this is being held on a work day, which is the reason why it didn't go 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up through. Uh, only opposed seats, not unopposed seats, which is the reason why Mike Height didn't sit there and answer questions by himself because your choice was to vote for Mike Height or nobody in the Republican primary, right? So. And I'm hoping to get at least 50% of the vote. <laughs> nobody's running strong, Mike. Nobody's running strong. Uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, everybody else that we could, uh, we invited, some uh, responded. Someone said, what happened to the Morgan County people? That was in the past. Uh, one couldn't make it, and the other one, no matter what avenue I tried to approach that person by, didn't respond. So I don't have subpoena powers, I've said in the past. So if you don't respond, you're not there. That's just kind of how life works out. Everybody else either responded, they could make it, couldn't make it, work got in the way, too busy, whatever. And, and that's how we ended up with the times that we ended up with. And don't read anything else into it other than that. Let me ask you this. And, and uh, if, if there were somebody that um, had an, an opponent, um, two candidates had an opponent, and one was willing to come, but the other one did not respond to that. Do you give that one the opportunity to say anything, or is it just they're both out? Uh, they were both out from the forum because the forum was an opportunity to give candidates who are opposed and have an opponent who could make it the opportunity to speak about their positions with their opponent beside them or their two opponents. Uh, those who couldn't make it are invited to become on the program before May the 14th. Uh, the challenge seat for the Senate uh, 16th, Espinosa and Rucker, is that the 16th, Mike? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, they, uh, they, Paul had a work conflict, couldn't make it to the forum, so uh, Espinosa and Rucker will be here Monday between 9 and 10. And anybody else who couldn't make it, we've offered the same opportunity to do the same opposed forum in studio. Some have taken advantage of that and some have not. That's as politely as I'll put that. Excellent. For now. <laughs> now, Mr. Gilstrap, you put this next segment together. Ron Stevens alluded to it somewhat in announcing the upcoming graduations and spring festivities. So I will, with that transition, hand this over to you. All right. Well, it's, it's no secret that for uh, 16 years I was a volunteer firefighter. And we ran many, many, I ran thousands and thousands of calls. And this is the time of year that um, was, was always – traumatic at, at a number of different levels because this is it's, it's prom season and this is when the tragedy happens and um so back in in my day uh when i was in school we would have all these you know signal 30 i think was the name of the movie it was all these gory movies for teaching kids the the terrors of drunk driving we see dead bodies getting cut out of cars and that kind of stuff and it was supposed to terrorize us into not doing stupid things while we were driving and as a firefighter we learned it the other way we cut a lot of a, a lot of very injured and, and dead kids out of cars this time of time of year and martinsburg uh, high school has come up with a brand new program i guess it's not all that brand new it's about 15 years old 13 years old whatever it is uh where they do a live action uh recreation of a serious 
accident that is attended by children uh, by by high school kids and that are I, I won't talk about it amber stokes has been the coordinator of this for a long time we also have zoe levy who is a long time participant I'll, I'll take it over um, amber tell us about the program well, we started the program about 12 years ago at Martinsburg High School. I was the advisor for the SAD Club, which is Students Against Destructive Decisions. Um, so we started this program because we felt that there was a need for children to be able to see what can truly happen in, in an accident um, up close and personal. So we start our program with in the auditorium and we have a, a speakers that have been through traumatic uh, accidents and um, we've had speakers that have had family members die because of drinking and driving at a young age, um, under age, and they shouldn't be. Um, we've had other people that have spoke about their children that they have lost. Um, we've had also had kids talk as adults that were in accidents where there were fatalities. Um, and we have one speaker that came in a few years ago that spoke about, um, he spent jail time. He was in a serious accident the end of the school year at a party and they ended up in an accident and one of the people in the car actually passed away. So it does make a big impact um, on our students. Yeah, it, actions have consequences, and these things happen very, very quickly. Absolutely. How do the kids take it? Um, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. Um, we have students that, you know, think it's a joke, and they make fun, and they laugh, and, you know, that's a small percentage. And then we have students that are just in tears, um, because especially when they see their classmates, even though it is a mock scenario, it's a very real thing. For them um, to see up close and personal and and in the face of um, of them so they uh, it, it's a mixed bag but I think that it makes a huge impact I've had students come back to me or email me um, and say you know thanks for doing that you know that that makes me think twice you know so I, I, I'm glad that we do this. Let me point out for those on the radio side, on our TV 10 side and Facebook live stream side, the pictures are being displayed right now of the students posed in the mock traffic accidents uh, that this will also uh, be representing. And right now there's a picture on screen of a young man with his head bloodied uh, as well. So. So, so Zoe, what's your involvement? So the last two years I've been in the accident and then this current year I am the student coordinator for it. Um, for most of it I play the dead person, um, which means I get out there with everyone and then this, as soon as I see the students coming out I just kind of lay there um, and then I, they move me to wherever it is and then I'm out there the longest and um, they zip me up in a body bag, take me away in a hearse, and yeah, that's, that's normally who I play, but then um, I've also played someone going in the ambulance where um, you act as if you had just been in a car crash and then you are disoriented and you're confused on what's going on and you see all of your friends who are not in a, in a situation where they're okay and they're safe and then you know try and play that out. You said normally that's what I play. How many times have you done this? <laughs> this is my third year doing it. And uh, are you you're currently a student? Yes. So you started doing this when you were like a sophomore? Yeah. Yep. Okay. What kind of feedback and reactions have you gotten doing this? Goodness. I, I've gotten a lot. So I normally it's my friends coming up to me or even people that, I, that are um, acquaintances and they come up to me and they're, oh, my goodness, like that. That hurt, that hurt me to see you like that. I've gotten a lot of, don't ever do that again. That scared me so much. Um, last year, my, my best friend, I, I told her what was going to happen. She knew she was involved with it. She, you know, was, she was there when I signed up for it. And then when we got out there and watched it, it was a picture, I believe they put it in the school newspaper of her and one of our other friends just holding each other sobbing and like well but you you knew what I was doing you knew what was going to happen you saw the makeup before I even got out there she was like I know but just seeing it in front of me and it being so real 
So I've gotten I've gotten a, mo most of the reactions that I've gotten are, oh my, and like last year at prom I had people coming up to me and going, this is juice in my cup because I thought about it and then I just remember you see seeing you yesterday, and now and, and it just gave me a sick feeling in my stomach. Well, that's like, great. So you had an impact. You changed yeah. somebody's mind and maybe their life. Yeah. Yeah. At so it's core. This is a this is a, a production. Mm -hmm. So, um, are you using uh, the the theater class as part of this, or is yes. this just volunteers? Well, it normally is the theater kids who want to do it, and the theater kids who you know you ask first. Um, but last year, after doing it last year, I had people coming up to me right after the mock crash as I was walking to my car. People stopping me, going can I please be a part of this next year? I really want to be a part of this next year. So before the school year even started this year, the mock crash was full. Wow. I had people. Um, it, it is the theater kids, but the theater kids are also very versatile. We have theater kids who are in football. We have theater kids who are in band. We have theater kids who are in everything else. So it's it it reaches more people that way because then you don't have to just know the theater kids for it to be for it to have that impact because we also do a bunch of other things but it it mainly is us just because we have that training already there and i think a lot of people also don't know everything that goes on at the mock crash is complete improv we you know we prepare as best as we can with knowing where what is going to happen if you're going to be in the ambulance and you know where you're going but when you get out there it's complete improv and we just act as as we would if it were real and well, how many students are involved in this even not just in the production itself but in behind the scenes um, working on oh this oh goodness well we have one two three i want to say probably about 10 10 to 12. um we have i want to say about six people six people that are performing but then we have you know six more people that are helping with makeup helping with getting you know getting us on costume getting like everything to look right so once it moves from the auditorium and it moves out into the parking lot is what mm -hmm. it looks like yes. and this is where you have fire and rescue and you have the police and i'm, I'm not sure who provides a helicopter but you've, you've, there's a life flight helicopter that's involved so at that point the fire and rescue folks take over because you got safety con considerations yes. and, and and all of that um is it mandatory attendance by the student body no it is not um it is open to juniors and seniors because juniors and seniors are the only ones that can go to prom unless they're invited a, a lower classman is invited by an upperclassman um, so it's just for juniors and seniors. We opened it up to the entire school the first couple of years, um, but we found that sometimes the freshmen and sophomores are a little too immature to handle um, everything that, that they're going to see. So once the, the drama kids and the kids that are participating are in costume and dress, then they go outside and the police fire rescue, um, they kind of debrief brief them on what is going to happen how it's going to happen um, so that they're not scared you know when they start cutting on the car because they cut the roof off the car with the jaws of life and and the whole the whole production um, of of a traumatic scene so it's just juniors and seniors at this point that we open it up to and their parents um, they have opened it up to parents of kids that are involved with the production, um, but they've not opened it to the general public um, and parents simply because of parking and because this takes place in the afternoon at bus time. Mm -hmm. So um, we're finishing up at, at bus two, time. Yes. Yeah, so oh. we're so we're finishing up this at two thirty in the afternoon, and buses load at two thirty eight. So they have to get buses in um, and and set up. So they don't open it because of parking mainly so but things like this it can be it's interesting because you talk about kids laughing it off and and kids crying the emotional spectrum of teenagers we all we all know what they are right um right. but these are the things that i think do have an impact on 
on people because it's just it's three dimensional and it's real. The moulage, the makeup, the traumatic makeup that, that is used, you, you know it's fake, but it's just real enough to to resonate as as real. And you know you got to laugh in front of your friends because that's That'd that's be what, cool. Yeah. That's what yeah. you're expected to do. But then you go home and and you're alone and and you think about it you know whether you think about your parents your brothers your sisters your girlfriend your boyfriend whatever the, the case may be the, this is the kind of thing that i think has has a real impact well, on people and, and both you and mike have been emts and you've been on, on crash scenes and you've seen the, mm -hmm. the horrific nature of what happens in a crash especially ones that involve uh, drunk driving and uh, many times innocent lives are taken i've lost two really good friends to drunk drivers and both were great people and both of them had their lives ended prematurely because of something that shouldn't have happened, right? One left behind two tiny small children. It's a very sad story. But these are the consequences that take place when you're not making good decisions. And I noticed when you said sad, Amber, it's not students against drunk drivers, it's now students against- Destructive decisions. Yeah, because that involves a lot of stuff, including sure drunk does. driving. Mm -hmm. Your teenage years. You know, this production is very important because of the reasons you say it. It, it, it teaches students that these possi of, the, of these possibilities and and to not take these chances. But it also goes a step further that that it involves the the fire and rescue and and fire and rescue providers are always looking for training opportunities and this is an excellent training opportunity for them to come in and be able to hone their skills. Um, uh, in, in this production, um, and it just makes them better for when uh, the reality strikes. And the reality is sometimes deadly. Yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, and I know when you're a teenager, you feel like you're invincible, and, well, that can't happen to me. Nothing can kill me. I'm a teenager. I'm young, strong, and whatever. But I, I wonder if that attitude is as prevalent as when we were younger, because your generation has been exposed to so much more than we were when we were that age. Um, I've, I mean, a lot of my friends, they, a lot of them go, well, everyone tells you not to drink and drive, but I, I like, I just can't. I wouldn't even think about it. And a lot of them, because um, our parents' generation has seen all this happen and everything, a lot of our parents have instilled, I'm not going to be mad at you, if you text me that you're drunk and need me to drive you home, I will be so mad at you if you get in a car and you're drunk and you drive home. So I think a lot of our parents have definitely taken a great route of saying, I'm not gonna be mad because I know that you're a teenager and I know you're going to drink, but it's a matter of doing it safely and saying, I don't care where you are, I don't care what's going on. If you need me to come and get you, I will come and get you, no questions asked. And I think that's also a very big help of having not um, kind of trying to resolve that issue is just having our parents be involved and having kind of like a no judgment of whatever's going to happen, I will drive you home at the end of the night. And I think another thing is, um, I just wanted to add this in that the fire department and all the people who work with the mock accident are so well trained and so um, considerate of us of, you know, during the accident, say, coming up to me, coming up to us and whispering, hey, are you okay? Do you need anything? And then, you know, if someone isn't okay, then they will immediately get them out of the situation, whatever's going to happen. And I think that a lot of times we try and take it as seriously as we can, but also we are being cut out of cars and it's, it is a bit scary sometimes, but they do an excellent job of making sure that we're okay in that process. Yeah, I think it, it's important to note um, being on the other side of the jaws of life, that there's a yeah. th there's a lot of pneumatic <laughs> pressure that's going on right there, <laughs> and yeah. it's it's tough to be that close to that much cutting power. So yeah. it's uh, it, it's uh, so well, good on all of you. My last question is for Zoe because you said you're the one that goes in the body bag. Mm -hmm. What was it like the first time they zipped that up and it was complete darkness? In there? Um, well, actually, they don't zip it up all the way. They they leave it open just a little bit. Because um. there's no zipper on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> no, um, usually no one's getting out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's a bit scary, honestly. It's, it's real because you get zipped up in the body bag and then you're being moved around and all of a sudden you're in a car and you're driving away. And you're like, wow, 
because it's it's just kind of like a scary feeling of like this could actually happen this could be me um and i i think it's not as scary for me as it is for my friends because they have to see you my classmates my friends my teachers my teachers coming to school you know that next monday and they were they i walk in and and they immediately want to talk to me about it about like Oh my goodness! Like my heart, seeing you go in and being zipped up in that body bag. Mm-hmm. So I, th- I think it's, it's definitely scary for me, but it's not. It doesn't have the same weight that it does for the people watching it. Hey, I want to thank you both for coming in today and talking about this very important item. When does this take place? This takes place tomorrow afternoon. So, if we can save one life and change one kid's mind about the decisions they make for prom and graduation, we're good. Amber, thanks so much. Thank you. Zoe, thank you. Thank you.